Hello. Good morning. I hope everyone can hear me okay. If you can hear me okay, can you just put in the chat box, which I think is located on the bottom right, just to let me and Rebecca know that you can hear us loud and clear. Do you want to say hello, Rebecca, just to make sure our sound is, is okay? Hi, everyone. <laughs> you caught me mid-sip. <laughs> all loud and clear. Lovely, lovely. Perfect. Thank you all. Lovely. Well, I'm just going to jump straight in. So good morning and thank you for joining us. I'll be running through a very, very quick introduction uh, just before I hand over to Rebecca um, from our SEO and content team who will be delivering a talk on the dreaded cost of living crisis, how it can affect your marketing plans and then sort of what we recommend you start thinking about sooner rather than later. So just by way of introduction, so my name is Rob. I'm one of the founders here at the Digital Maze. Day to day, um, I'm the commercial director and I'm joined today by Rebecca, who is an integral part of our SEO and content team. So do you want to quickly give yourself an introduction, Rebecca? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, uh, I'm about to enter my ninth year in the industry, actually. So started out content, moved into SEO, dabbled in PPC, social media, went back to content, and now here I am. Lovely job. So just before Rebecca goes into the interesting stuff, by way of introduction, so with the Digital Maze, we are a collection of specialist dig digital agencies, uh, and we've, we've come together. We actually came together back in 2020 um, to deliver what we feel is a sort of powerful, holistic service to our customers. So just a quick rundown of some stats. So we're drum recommended. We manage sort of upwards of half a million pounds per year of media spend. Group of partners produce 300 plus websites. We've got a team, I think it's actually around 46 people we've got in the team now, and that's spanning across SEO, paid media, and web development. Um, you know, we, we, we write for some of the industry's top publications as well, which Rebecca has certainly done. I know that for sure, because one got released very recently, as recent as last week, I think. Yeah. Um, and just so you guys know that we walk the talk as well as talk the talk, here's a handful of our customers uh, spanning sort of our SEO, paid media, and web development services. A large portion of our client base are e-commerce based. This is where we feel the greatest marketing opportunities are and where we feel as a team we do our best work. I know obviously it's also an area that's impacted by the cost of living crisis. So um, yeah, very, very relevant to us, very high in our thoughts. So I am going to hand right over to you, Rebecca, and I'm going to hope this transition from me stopping sharing my screen and my presentation and you sharing yours is smooth. So <laughs> over to you. Okay, let's do this. Okay, can everyone see my screen? I can see the record. Awesome, because, yeah, so, yeah. Some of you may know the story of when that didn't happen the once. <laughs> Good to know. Awesome, thank you guys. Okay, so if any of you have ever seen my presentations before, you'll know that I like to give everything a theme. Um, it's been things like Marie Kondo, Gilmore Girls. My next one in a couple of weeks time is gonna be Jurassic Park themed. Um, so for this one, I was trying to think of what can I do to sort of lighten the mood a little bit because the cost of living is a really stressful situation. So the theme today, oh, is this gonna work? There we go, is the pets of the office. So every now and then I'll just throw a picture of a pet at you uh, just to help everyone not get so down really, because it's quite a serious topic, isn't it? So the one on the right is my boy, Maurice. Uh, the one in the middle is yours, right, Rob? It is, that's Chip. Yeah. Trying yeah. to be a cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's like a cat. Cool, okay, so the story so far, you may know this, but I'm gonna give you a bit of a, a brief overview. The cost of living crisis is something that's recently started, but is worrying a lot of people. And it's really going to affect everyone from brands to consumers. Um, I did a quick look this morning to make sure that this kind of stuff, well, to be honest, I was hoping that it was all going to be cleared up, but no, it's all still happening. Um, but this just shows the breadth of, of who's being hit. So you've got pensioners being hit. You've got children not being able to eat. You've got people coming out of retirement. People getting uh, animals are being put up for adoption. It's just, it's hitting every single facet of human life and it's only just begun. We don't know where it's gonna go. So 
I decided to have a look to see if we have any data so far that we can use. So KPMG did a survey of 3,000 consumers asking them about how they were planning to spend their money in 2022. So I want to run through some of the findings with you. So, so far, 31% have said that they've already started buying less in anticipation of the cost of living crisis getting um, quite bad. 43% are going to plan to buy the same that they did last year. But let's also bear in mind that last year we also had a pandemic. So that doesn't necessarily mean that they're spending the way they usually do. They're just going to spend the same as they were during the pandemic. Um, 17% are planning to buy more, which is quite a nice little bit of news. Two thirds of consumers that have savings are still planning to buy the things that they want. And we saw this during the pandemic as well. And I know that I certainly did it. People will be cutting back, but will still be wanting to give themselves a treat every now and then just to you know, keep the serotonin up. And this is what I found really interesting. The rising cost of living, the rising cost associated with the cost of living is four times a bigger hindrance to people spending their savings than during the pandemic, which makes sense, right? We got hit by something that put us all into our homes and we couldn't leave. And then we got hit by something else, which was like, you know, fuel prices going up. And then we had the war in Ukraine, then a cost of living crisis. People aren't going to know <laughs> what's coming next. Um, so they're four times less likely to want to spend their savings and on average consumers are expecting to spend 82 pounds 80 more on bills and taxes so that's 82 pound 80 that they won't be spending uh with brands there's Richard Maurice to make things feel a little bit less daunting um one third of consumers sorry that was it of the third of people that said that they were gonna spend less one third of them said that it was going to be because of the rising costs. So they are worried that they're not going to have as much to spend. And we know that salaries aren't really going to stretch as far as they normally do. When it comes to the most common things that they're going to cut, 67% are going to stop buying so many clothes. And that was almost 75% amongst the female participants of the survey. 51% are having less takeaways. I know I'm definitely within that, sadly. 51% um, are going to cut back on their food and drink shopping. 47% are going to go to the cinema less, going to be doing, um, I guess, like escape rooms, those kinds of experiences that you tend to do with other people. 39% are either looking for lower cost holidays or putting their holiday back entirely for a little while. And 34% are buying less beauty products and services. So anyone who operates in these sectors are going to feel these hits. 31% are lowering their, uh, the amount of spending on transport and vehicle use. Subscription boxes is interesting because they they really grew in popularity over the last few years haven't they but they're also going to take a hit as well 26 percent of people aren't going to be spending money on those subscription services so the likes of netflix uh the likes of gift boxes that kind of thing your graze boxes all that stuff and 18 percent are going to cut back on their fitness um which i'm assuming is gym memberships and the like of the participants that have savings they said that they want to put their money towards the following this year so 38% will be spending their savings on that holiday. 32% on home improvements, 22% on buying a new car, which is interesting when you think of how a lot of participants are going to spend less time traveling. 21% um, on home appliances and electronics, 19% are going to use their savings on a new house, and 1% stated other. So we're not sure what that is. So people operating in this sector may not see quite the turn down that, that others will. But again, you just don't know because it's all still so new. This is kind of a caveat. So we haven't seen the true impact of the cost of living crisis. So all this information uh, is just the start, really. Um, but what we do know based on that information is that brands are going to probably have a bit of a rough ride, just like everyone over the next hopefully few months. Here's a picture of a dog, <laughs> just to make you feel a bit better. So we know from the pandemic that when things get tough and there's financial uncertainty, the first thing that businesses do is slash their marketing budgets. But we also saw the pandemic that a lot of businesses that were doing that were then scaling their organic marketing back up when they saw that people were staying indoors and going online and spending money online a lot more than they were going out. Um, there's a podcaster, Azim, who during the pandemic, he was doing a lot of interviews and there were a lot of people were saying the same, that they saw an initial downturn and then a massive uptake in organic services because that's where the demand was. So 
should you turn off your marketing during times of financial uncertainty like the cost of living crisis? I'm not going to be able to tell you categorically whether you should or shouldn't, but here's just a few reasons why I personally think that you shouldn't turn it off entirely. And I know that it's not a switch of a button, um, but for the, the concept of this, let's just pretend it is. So during the pand uh, post-pandemic, brands that continue to stay relevant and continued to engage with their consumers and spend time with them were more successful when it came to recovering post-pandemic than any brands that disappeared, i.e. switched their marketing off. Because people aren't going out as much, because they're not going out for these experiences, um, they're coming back on their food, their drink, all that kind of stuff, they are going to spend, they're likely to spend their time online. So your online visibility is going to be tremendously important. And again, this was evident during the pandemic. And just because shoppers and visitors aren't investing right now, doesn't mean that they're not going to see your site, see how you're engaging and how you're acting, and then come back and buy from you at a later date. And it's better for you to have that than for them to get your competitors. And finally, if marketers are good at anything, this is my honest opinion, if they're good at anything, it's at switching strategies quickly. It's at looking at the data, making an educated decision and pivoting their strategies in line to try and protect businesses and help them keep going for as long as possible. So they're my reasons why I personally think you shouldn't switch it off entirely. You may need to change things up. Um, but I just did want to highlight those points. So I also wanted to cover how the cost of living crisis could impact your marketing. And again, I just need to caveat that we're in very early days. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, so these are just sort of educated assumptions. So when it comes to your online stores, um, you may see more traffic, but less traffic when it comes to your actual physical brick and mortar stores. The increase in traffic to your site may feel unqualified because not as many people are buying, but there is that uptake in, in website traffic. This doesn't mean necessarily that they're unqualified. It just means that they're not able to invest right now. I have so many tabs open on my phone of things that I'm going to buy, and I have a budget set out for every single month what I'm going to spend on these treats I'm going to give myself. Um, and before the cost of living and before the pandemic, I'd have just bought those things. But now I have to be a lot more responsible <laughs> with how, how I'm spending my money. Um, and if I'm doing that, then consumers are doing that as well. So you may see a lot of people coming onto your site but not investing, but that doesn't mean that they won't. Um, and you may also find your less, pop your less popular e-commerce items becoming more popular. So I'm thinking of things that are more need-to-haves than, than want-to-haves. Um, less treats, more essential purchases. Another picture of a cat. Okay, so with all that in mind, we've put together some advice on how we would recommend you approach the cost of living crisis. You won't be able to take all this on, you might not, um, but you might be able to take one or two. So, First of all, I highly recommend when it comes to your online strategies to go back to basics. Think of it almost like an algorithm update. You don't the first day of an update rollout, you don't make massive changes, do you? You gather the data. Um, and the great thing about online marketing is that there's so much information that you're gathering all the time, 24 hours a day. And digital marketers can use that really well to advantage of the brand. So don't panic straight away. Gather the data and make an educated decision on what you're going to do next. Because people are spending less and they want the money to go a lot further, now is the time to deliver as much value as possible across the entire board of your services. Um, and I do recommend, you may have done your, your personas, you may have a really good idea of who your customers are, what they're thinking, but right now, what they're thinking is likely very different to what they were thinking six months ago, two years ago, pre-pandemic. It's likely really different. So do that research again and figure out what's on your audience's mind, your potential customers' minds, and how you can help them giving as much value as possible is going to be key at the moment and another thought I had was that trying to get new customers finding them educating them getting them down that sales funnel it's really expensive right so for the short term while we're battling our way through this cost of living crisis maybe focus your efforts on your existing and loyal customers if possible um find a way to get them to reinvest and that's going to be cheaper for you while still giving you a steady stream of income If you're using multiple platforms, so you have SEO, PPC, social media, PR, 
that's a lot, right? Especially when you're trying to cut back on budgets. So there are things that you can do here. You can look at cost saving content strategies. So normally we would say if, you, if you're creating um, a piece of content to look at where you wanna put it and then optimize it for that platform. What we're saying at the moment in the short term is to look for content that can be used on multiple platforms. So can you do a, a hub piece of content that can be shared socially, um, put through PR, can sit on your site, you know, things that have more than one place to sit. Um, and also as, as a caveat to that, if you could maybe do it in different formats, so long form, video if you can, us speaking so that, what's it called? <laughs> so that people can hear it um, like a podcast. My next piece of advice is to do some competitor research. How are they responding? And again, this isn't to steal any ideas or to copy them, but it's to see if they understand the audience like you do. Your competitors may but you may find through all can everyone still see me? Yeah, I can still see you. Oh, she's gone. Am I back? Are you have an internet connectivity issue, Rebecca? I am. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> you are back, though. Cool. Let's try this again. I'm glad you were so quick. I did panic that I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you may have to thank some share for us, Rob. <laughs> Um, where was I? Oh yeah, so if your competitors are offering 10%, but you've found that your audience actually really need bulk orders at a reduced cost, which again is something that I'm doing, um, so if I'm doing it, other people are doing it, um, then you're already on a stronger footing, so you already have the upper hand against your competitors. My next piece of advice is to redo your search term research, and I think that everyone should do this anyway. Um, but my recommendation here is to rely on your PPC teams because they have really up-to-date, almost like 24-hour notice, right, um, information on what people are searching for. And that will have shifted in response to the cost of living crisis. We saw that through the pandemic. We see it whenever there's a financial situation that's affecting consumers. So rely on your PPC team and also use Search Console. Um, and then there's also free tools, not free tools, sorry, tools like SEMrush where they tell you what, you're ranking for entirely, not just what you're targeting. So again, have another look at that and see if you can pivot your strategy that way. I have to click over here now, aren't I? There we go. Um, my next advice is to recenter your communications. So as I mentioned earlier, if you have products that you can categorize into nice to haves and need to haves, maybe ask your team to focus on the need to haves and really pushing those through digital marketing rather than the want to haves because we know that more people are gonna be spending on the need to have, so they will sometimes grab a want to have as a treat to get that serotonin level up, excuse me, but the need to have will be um, something that a lot of people are focusing on right now. This next one is a little pet peeve of mine, so I did wanna bring it up, and it's that when it comes to talking to your customers, you need to be empathetic and helpful, but don't fall into the habit of constantly referencing a motto. If I had a penny for every time I heard, times are tough, we're here for you during the pandemic, it was infuriating. So try and keep some originality there. And my last point, if you do need to put the prices of your products up, which we know you may have to, that's sometimes unavoidable. Um, make sure that you're increasing the value of what you're offering as much as you possibly can and make a plan on how you'll communicate this. Someone's just said, we're all in this together, not really. <laughs> which I think is in reference to um, pandemic talk. <laughs> um, yeah, so we have a look at how you're communicating with people. This is a really good example that I found. This is a small business. And again, they used uh, one piece of content in different ways. It was on the same platform, but you kind of get the idea. So they had the same content in image form, and then they had a write-up at the top so that different people with different preferences can read whatever they want. Um, and essentially, they were saying, okay, guys, we haven't increased our prices for eight years we're a small business if we don't increase it we're gonna we're gonna go under and loyal customers will see that and they'll want to support the brand and it just makes them more likely to to carry on supporting you whereas if you up the prices and don't tell anyone and someone notices that's gonna leave a really sour taste in their mouth especially when they're probably saved for that product as well 
another little caveat of mine. So everyone at the office is so sick of me talking about purpose-driven marketing because I talk about it all the time. But again, this is a really good time to reevaluate your, your approach to your audience. Uh, from the Adam and Trist barometer, we know that 58% of consumers that took part in their survey want to buy from a brand that has the same beliefs and values as them. And if you're not sure, if you haven't learned much about purpose-driven marketing, because it is relatively new for the digital age, there's um, a post on Mars that I wrote and at Drink Digital this month, Rob, this month, uh, I'll be talking about creating a CSR strategy, corporate social yes, responsibility. 29. 29th, there you go. I'll be talking about it in a bit more detail. Um, I won't go into it all here because we don't have time for me to waffle on for hours and hours. Um, but yeah, grab your ticket to drink and come and have a chat about purpose-driven marketing. We've already talked about being upfront if you're going to raise your costs. Um, and also bear in mind that emotions are going to be really high. So it's a bit of a personal story. I had an issue with a brand recently and they just they kept copying and pasting the same response over and over in their emails thinking that i would eventually give up and get bored but as someone who works in digital comms <laughs> and with so much going on there's so much uncertainty going around my emotions were high so i kept on until i won so previously i would have just accepted it and walked away but because of everything that's going on i was determined to get the response that i wanted um so when you're talking to your consumers really think about the fact that they they may not be as relaxed as normal there's a lot going on there's a lot of stresses you have to really be empathetic in our approach that way and here's an example so <laughs> uh you may have seen this i think her name's jess pardo she wrote a pr piece about this um about if bad pr is good pr and i really highly recommend you going and check that out but uh, i got this story from there so as they bought out a new line of um lower cost products let's say and there was an initial uproar because people were saying that it's embarrassing um, and that they're calling out poorer families by showing them this bright yellow packaging. Um, and the response, and as it didn't jump up quickly and defeat them, uh, defend themselves straight away, as far as I'm aware, what happened was that other consumers came up and was like, actually, we're all in the same boat. We're all trying to save. It's not anything to be um, embarrassed about. So as his next campaign was embarrassed to save money, not according to our customers. So they flipped that on its head and they were really empathetic to say, actually, you shouldn't be embarrassed to save money. We're all in this together. And I really liked that example. So I wanted to include it. This is my last section on advice. Um, and it's directly for your website, really. So are there any additional ways that you can help? Can you add more value, make things easier on the consumers and make them more likely to invest? So like I mentioned earlier, can you do deals? Is there a discount you can give them on uh, bulk purchases? Can you offer buy now, pay later schemes? And just a caveat to that, there are a lot of legalities associated with that. So if you haven't got that on your site, but you want to, I really recommend getting financial advice and legal advice just to make sure you're covered. Um, can you implement a loyalty program? I don't know if any of you shop at Costa, but they do a loyalty program. But if you take your own cup, they give you two points, so you get a coffee, a free coffee, every five purchases rather than every ten. Um, so I go to Costa every time I go to the office because I get, I feel like I'm getting a free, two free coffees for the price of one, if that makes sense. Uh, other options: Can users pay via PayPal so that they can pick a PayPal credit, or can they pay for a product on your site using Monzo Flex? Just these little ways that they can spread the cost a little bit. Remember, it's eighty pounds, eighty-two, I think it was, uh, that people. Uh, going to put towards bills in air quotes because we don't know the full extent uh, so making things as cheap as possible for the longer run is going to be great I think uh, and then also when it comes to your content that you're producing again don't focus so much on trying to get the new visitors and educate them and get them down the funnel provide really useful content for your loyal and current customers to help them increase the longevity of their products so that when it becomes time that they need to actually replace it properly because they can't fix it anymore, um, that they're going to come back to your brand because you're, you weren't the one saying, oh, it's broken. Oh, come get a new one. You were saying, okay, it's broken. Have you looked at this? Have you looked at this? Have you tried that? You've given them really helpful content that isn't focused on trying to get money off them during this really stressful period of time. So 
looking back at the pandemic as well, we know that more people are going to be going out less. It was probably a bit heightened because in the pandemic we weren't allowed to go out. But, you know, when it comes to financial security, people will be going out less. But that means they'll be spending more time online, um, whether they're shopping, looking for entertainment or looking for answers. So I I genuinely believe that now is not the time to pull the plug on your online marketing efforts, but I do believe it's the time to pivot. Financial experts are saying that the situation is going to get worse before it gets better. So my response to that is to shift your strategies so that you can help your business or uh, your clients um, find ways to help shoppers spend their money wisely and maintain those customer relationships because that's what you're looking for long term relationships of continual reinvestment, right? Digital marketers are amazing at shifting campaigns to respond to situations that are out of our control. We're so creative in that way. So use us. We can be so helpful and we have so much data that we can draw upon um, that's really up to date as well. So thank you very much. I hope that's answered some questions that you have. If you have any others or you want any more advice or help, the Digital Maze and Boom are there for you. Thank you, Rebecca. You're more than welcome. I can't believe I only got through one coffee. I have a second one waiting. One coffee and only a couple of minor technical issues. Yes, there's always a <laughs> Well, look, thank you for that. Thank you for everyone um, for joining us this morning. So what I want to do before we all shoot off is for Rebecca to take the floor and answer any questions that you guys might have. So what I'm going to do is ask you guys to use, you'll see in the bottom right-hand side of your screen, you'll see a questions tab um, where you guys can feed some questions in. I'm going to kick it off with the first question. So um, can you see that one come up, Rebecca? Where am I looking? So, oh, I see questions. Oh, I am with awesome, you. Right. Okay, yeah. what metrics would you be tracking alongside the obvious, such as revenue, orders, and inquiries? Um, actually, really interesting. I was reading recently about the idea of tabs. So I, I mentioned earlier that I've got loads of tabs open. Um, and every time someone has a tab and goes off it and then goes back on it, so they shut their phone down, open it up again, it counts it in Google Analytics as a view, but it comes through as a zero view. So I would recommend looking at those to see how many people have got tabs open to try and get an idea of where future um, spending could come in. I think assisted conversions are really good as well because you can see what kind of content historically has worked well um, and then put that alongside what you now know of your new audience and see if you can come up with a strategy that way. Um, I've lost the question. There we go. Uh, revenue orders inquiries the metrics i think return uh, returning customers will be a good one as well because again we if we're going down the strategy of trying to keep long uh, keep loyal customers and get them to reinvest rather than spend so much money and trying to get new customers in the short term then looking at new versus returning will give you a really good idea if your strategies are paying off in that respect perfect i've, I've chucked another one in there if you don't mind sure do you think marketers should emphasize this is where I need my glasses. Do you think marketers should emphasize getting potential customers into their ecosystem rather than a direct monetary conversion? I've always thought that. I think that email marketing is so successful because of that. Um, it's keeping up relationships, right? And thinking of the brands that I like the most and that I spend most of my time, they do have a really strong presence online and they do engage and it's not always about the bottom line for them. Um, yeah. Perfect. So Marcus has asked, do you think SEO is even more important than ever? And if so, why? I mean, I'm going to say, yeah, because it's my job, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not that you're biased or anything like that, no? <laughs> I do think, though, that the approach to SEO is changing. Yeah. Um, it used to be, you know, X and Y, you get money. And now it is more about, okay, What's our responsibility as a brand? We have to maintain these relationships. What can we do um, for our customers? And I'm seeing a lot of that in terms of um, the purpose of marketing stuff that I've seen. So traditional SEO, where you try and get into position one, uh, maybe is less important, but building those relationships, um, providing value, because more people are online now than ever. So I think the relationship side of SEO is more important than ever. Perfect. Any more 
for any more. Any more questions from anybody at all? Uh, stick them in the questions tab or in the chat tab, either or. No. Well, lovely. First of all, thank you, Rebecca. I thought that was, um, yeah, no, I thought that was really great. And, I, you know, I did read it before, but, you know, seeing you deliver it for the first time was was, was great. Added a lot of context to, to some of the slides that, that you have there as well. Uh, some really good advice. So I appreciate everyone's time this morning. Um, oh, yeah. there's a blog post. If people want to go back. Yes. So if you head to our website, which is boom online, boom online.co.uk, there is actually a blog post that, again, Rebecca has typed up. Um, <laughs> We were talking this morning about how long that had taken, actually. But, um, yeah, there's been a lot of time going into that. So there is a blog post that's gone up on there, um, which sort of supports a lot of the stuff um, that Rebecca's spoken about today. Obviously, we've got the Drink Digital event, uh, which happens uh, every two months. And next one is coming up on the 29th of this month. And, again, Rebecca, it's, I feel like I can keep saying Rebecca. I've seen her <laughs> face, but Rebecca is doing a talk there as well. Um, and we are looking to do more webinars as well. So feel free to check out any further webinars that we do in the future um, or any emails that we send following this. So, yeah, thank you very much. And we'll see you all soon. Thank you, everyone.